Think about it, church. Oh, he's so good. Praise God. Praise God. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. To know him, the power of the Holy Ghost, and to feel his presence right here, right now. And uh, I know God is going to do marvelous things this morning. Do you believe that? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, special prayer request. Uh, most of you know, I imagine, but Sister Ramage's father passed away, Brother Will Banks. Uh, and uh, they, they had the arrangements already set up. The funeral is going to be, and the viewing is going to be tomorrow at Royal Wood Church, Brother Macy's Church. Visitation is going to be uh, 10 a.m., and the funeral service is going to be at 11. If any of you can make it, that would be wonderful for the family. But, you know, the very best thing we can do is pray for them. Pray for the peace. Uh, it's never, never easy to lose a loved one. So please keep that family in your prayer. And uh, pray for those who have phoned in requests. Uh, you have many names upon the screens, and we know a God who can answer each and every need. And if you have something in your life that uh, you would like to have us pray about, uh, you know, we cannot just take out everybody's name or everybody's request uh, individually here, but we can lift our hand unto the Lord. Yes. And he knows yes, every need. So why don't we take these needs to him right now? Father. You know, the, the song just said, because of who you are. And you are great, God. You are the God. There is no other. You are almighty. 
You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. And you are the great healer. You are everything that we need, God. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Thankful to be in your house. Thankful to be with your people. Thankful to know you. Lord, and I'm thankful that we can come to you, God, with every one of our needs. And we're doing that. I pray right now, Lord, for those uh, who have phoned in request, God, that you would answer their needs uh, in an individual way, God. Uh, healings, deliverance, supply. God, whatever it is, you know. Lord, every uplifted hand here this morning, God, uh, I pray, God, that you move in our lives and that you answer our needs. I anoint our pastor today as he ministers. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. And bless each and every person in your house, God. For we've come to worship you this morning. And we're thankful for the opportunity to do that. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Worship with Brother Philip Allen as he leads us in song. Sweet day, I'll sing up there the song of 
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Praise God. Usher, why don't you come forward? Let's receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Father, we're thankful again for the opportunity and the ability and the privilege to give. We ask you to bless every gift and giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you for all you've done and all that you will do. You're faithful. I'm grateful. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. God. And we are thankful for each and every person that's here today. Praise God. Especially our guest. And I see a number of guests here today. Uh, won't you take a few moments and shake someone's hand? Thank them for coming. Praise God. And especially our guest, we are so, so thankful that you have come to be with us here today. As a matter of fact, we are so thankful that we have a gift for you. Uh, in our hospitality room through the double doors by the piano. And uh, I'd like to maybe answer any questions you may have, get to know you a little bit better in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. By way of announcements, uh, ensemble practice tonight at 4.30, so choir, uh, you have the night off. And... Uh, be here a little bit early for prayer. Service times begins at 6.30. Prayer room begins at 7. And uh, we're looking forward to a great move of God tonight. Praise God. Somebody asked me this morning, they said, is the, is the revival over? I said, oh, no, 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 no. We just switched evangelists. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we, we're, we're waiting to see what God is going to do this morning and tonight. Uh, the ladies' Bible study, and I know the ladies were, were looking forward to this, is starting back up again August the 17th, I believe it is, this Thursday. It's going to be a little bit changed up a little bit, but uh, come and see. I know that you're going to have a great time in the uh, Bible study. School starts Tuesday. Brother Ainsworth says, yeah! <laughs> Praise God. But... Uh, uh, so that, that's always an exciting time of the year when school begins. And just please be careful coming and driving and all those good things. And then the, the youth has a cookbook on sale or, or getting together. If you have any recipes, uh, see one of the youth committees or I guess maybe some of the youth. I don't know. But uh, we're looking forward to uh, I want to taste what you cook. Now, I mean, I'm open for invitations, but I can just read the recipe, too. So uh, let them know. Put, put, put your favorite. I put three of my favorite recipes in there already if they take them. Uh, but uh, if you want to learn how to make Pops goulash, you're going to have to buy the book. But uh, I, know, I know you'll enjoy it. Invite me over and I'll tell you how good it is. Praise God. Classes, you can be dismissed in the name of the Lord and worship with uh, Sister Ruth Raley as she sings unto the Lord.
just what I say. I'm of a special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Oh, he knew me. And yet he loved me. He whose glory makes the heaven shine. I'm so unworthy of such mercy. When he was on Common flesh and bone, but I'll prove someday just what I say. I'm of a special kind, for when He was on that old cross, I was on.
Can we love him now? All over the house, everybody, man, woman. Can you love him? Can you love him? Can you really love him? Can you praise him? Can you thank him? Are you thankful? Are you thankful? Has he been good? Is he deserving? Oh, what a wonderful God we serve today. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Ruth. It's good to be in the house of God again today as always. Never do we ever want to take it for granted. It's good to see each and every one of you that are here. May God richly bless you for coming. We have several visitors this morning. We want you to know you thrill our hearts when you walk through those doors. We look back there and see you in those pews. You'd thrill us even more if you'd come back again. Amen. I understand we have uh, Brother Billy DeLucia's brother here. Is it Kenneth? It's good to have you this morning, Kenneth. We sure did love your brother. And he had a special place in most all of our hearts around here before he passed away. It was so good to see him worship the Lord, how he used to worship God. Such an inspiration to us all. I believe we have some folks here from Zavala, is that correct? We're, it's good to have you folks here this morning. Thank you for coming. And all of our guests, we're just glad that you're here. And um, let me uh, say a few things before. Why don't you sit down? Because I want to preacher said one time, uh, I want to say something before I preach, but I, then somebody said, I hope he says something when he preaches as well. But uh, I want to, I want to personally take time to thank each and every one of you today for being such awesome and amazing people. I thank you for the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reception that you gave for my wife on her 80th birthday uh, this past week. It was just overwhelming and such a beautiful thing. So many of you worked so hard and it showed and uh, it uh, you did it with a willing heart because you wanted to do that and and your reward will, reward will be great, I promise you. I ask the Lord for a double blessing for each and every one of you. And uh, for being so kind to do that. And then you know, within the same week, so many of you come right back and you worked so hard for the drama over here uh, last night. And it was such a wonderful drama. If you missed it, you, you, you missed a wonderful, wonderful time. It was a blessing. We enjoyed it so much. Am I, I was just amazed at the talent in the, that come out of our children and our our youth, and uh, my wife commented on the way home. She said, anybody that can't see that these people are being taught well, uh, I said, somebody's really putting some good teaching in our young people and our, our children. And, and it shows that anybody can see that. And I said, that's, that's certainly true. So... Just say again, you're so amazing, and I, I thank you for all of it. The Lord woke me up at 1 o'clock this morning and got me out of bed and wanted to talk to me about this message. And um, it wasn't one that I was particularly interested in hearing about. As a matter of fact, um, I... Uh, <laughs> I did something I usually don't do. I said, now, Lord, I don't want to talk about that. I had something else in mind. I said, what do you think about it? He said, thy will be done. I said, pardon me? He said, go ahead if that's what you want to do. You see, we've all got a will. Right. And we can obey our will or we can obey his will. And I learned a long time ago that 
his will is much better for me than my own will is. And so I said to him, I said, Lord, that's not exactly what I had in mind. What I really had in mind was that you allowed what I wanted to preach today to be your will. And uh, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. How many of you enjoying our evangelists that we've got around here? Isn't you, isn't, you, isn't you doing good? Thank you. Thank you. I don't know of a better one on the field today. I'm telling you, he is doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And he'll be back um, Wednesday night and uh, be here the rest of the month and maybe the month of September. Who knows? October, November, December, who knows? We're going to have a revival. Yeah, we are. And I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one that wants to be guilty of stopping a good thing going. We got a good thing going right now. And I tell you what, I am seeing things out of some of you folks I've never seen before. And they're good. And they're good. And why in the world? The only reason I didn't want to teach this lesson this morning was because of all the good things I could talk about and, and brag on you about. <laughs> I got to talk about that one thing that is lacking. And I don't really enjoy doing that. But... Uh, would you stand for the reading of the word, and then I will let you be seated. Sister Marion, thank you so much for your faithful support throughout the years for all the dramas that you have directed, written, put on. and what it, There's nothing, nothing draws as many visitors to this church as those dramas that have been put on. <laughs> Amen. So I thank God for... Sister Mary and I hope you live forever and, uh, and in good health and a sound mind, you know, as sound as you got right now anyway. And just, uh, I love Sister Mary. Don't we all? She's got just a tad of mischievousness in her. And I remember years ago when I used to have just a little bit in me and it, I can relate to that. Uh, overcome it a long time ago. Uh, uh, most of it anyway. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. And we will begin reading at verse 26. Thankful for all of you that are here. And I pray that you will open up your hearts and help me to be able to help you. I feel like that uh, the Lord wants me to talk about the weakest link in this church today. The weakest link. Not the strongest, but the weakest. Verse 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came. And destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom. It rained fire and brimstone from heaven. And destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day. When the son of man is revealed. Father this morning. As we stand in your holy presence, we thank you for the privilege of being in your house one more time. God, you've been so good to us. We don't deserve the mercy that we have received from you, and we thank you for your grace as well. Ask your Lord to help us to receive the word of God with gladness. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. You be, be seated. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord by standing. When we think about the days of Noah, 
we think about the Bible says that the whole earth was covered with the wickedness of men, and it was so. We think about Sodom and Gomorrah. We think about sexual sins that is running rampant in our world. And so when we read these scriptures, we think automatically about how sinful and ungodly that the world was to the fact that God himself sent destruction upon the people. But I want you to notice with me this morning very carefully. I'm going to just go slow because I want this to sink in. You notice that the scripture that I read did not ever mention ungodliness. It did not men mention sexual sin. It did not mention adultery, fornication. It said nothing about homosexuality, or lasciviousness, or even drunkenness or revelings. Nothing about murderers. And yet, those are the first things that come to our mind when we read scriptures like this and we think about that. But if you listen real closely, I think the Lord wants to help all of us this morning to realize just exactly what it is that brought judgment upon the city of Sodom and to the world. The scripture says, as it was in the day of Lot, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. And could I tell you that it goes, goes without saying that it's speaking to you and I in our day today and saying the same spirit that was prevalent then will be prevalent in the day when the Lord comes back to his church. I am of the firm opinion that it was not only the wickedness of man alone that brought destruction upon the world or upon Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, the area there. But I think it was a lack of something from people that should have been doing something they wasn't doing. I believe with all my heart that the things that would, would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah would have been if Lot and Mrs. Lot would have been soul winners. If they had won ten souls, just ten souls, he would not have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what he said. That's the way it was. And so I believe it was more the righteous people's fault even than it was the wicked people's fault. Because the righteous people knew something that the wicked didn't know. And as I stand here this morning before you as your pastor of 46 years, I want to talk to you about our weakest link in this church. Oh, there's what a wonderful church this is. There's not another church in all the world that I would want to be a pastor of. Never, never, ever. I've been blessed to have you. I could say so many wonderful and great things about each of you. But that really wouldn't help you to do any better than you're doing right now. But if somehow we could just kind of hit a card upon a little weakness, a little lack of maturity, spiritual maturity that God wants us all to have. What I want to talk to you about is something that every one of us are guilty of. We can't point our fingers at the other person sitting by us or across the aisle from us or 
from the front to the back. We're all guilty of a certain amount of what I want to talk to you about. What was it? What was it? The Bible said in, this is what the Bible says, the thing that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Said they did eat, they drank, they built, they planted, they bought, and they sold. Now, so help me God. I cannot find fault with none of that. I cannot personally myself see where any of that jumps out at anybody as being a sin. I think I just can't see it. What's wrong with building? Jesus himself was a builder. As a matter of fact, he was a carpenter by trade. And he walked the face of the earth. He was a builder. Not only was he a builder, but he instructed you and I in a lot of ways toward building. He discussed building a lot in his sermons and his exhortation. What's wrong with planning? What's wrong with planning? Everybody here has built something in your lifetime, one way or another. Everybody, most everybody here has probably planted something at one time in your life or another. I plant every year because I love planting. I love gardening. What's wrong with buying? We've all been guilty of buying and selling. Most of us have sold things before. And God knows we're all guilty of eating and drinking. But I don't see where none of those are sin, but yet that's the thing that he tells us about. That's what he's zeroing in on. He's not zeroing in on the sins of the world. He's zero, zeroing on just everyday life. Just everyday life. And with that said, I am more concerned this morning with everyday living than anything else that I'm concerned about. I believe if the church, not if the church, I believe that when the church, because this church is going to get there. I have seen this last year, I have seen so many people step up to the plate that hadn't stepped up before. And you've taken on responsibilities and duties that you've never took on before. And I see a transformation in this whole congregation, and I feel a spirit throughout this whole congregation that says we're going to climb up higher. We're going to be better than we've ever been. We're going to... And could I tell the world tonight, they ain't seen nothing yet. They ain't seen nothing yet. Mm. I want to read down a little uh, from another, another chapter in a same book, the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. Would you put that on the screen, please? And it says, and take heed to yourselves. Pardon me? It said what? It said, take heed to yourselves. I'm sorry. Did you hear that? Did you get it? Take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, the cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unaware. The reason that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like he did 
was simply because the righteous people that were there were not doing what they should have been doing. I don't want to sound boastful this morning, but I do want to sound factual. The world don't know it. The United States of America don't know it. But they need to thank God today, every day of their life, that there is a church still in this world. There are still some righteous people that's not going to act like they act, not going to do like they do, and not going to go like they go. And not That's going to be a church. There's going to be a people that's going to live a righteous life separated, coming out from among the world, being separate. I believe today is the greatest day for the church to shine that it's ever had. Amen. Amen. Not ten righteous people. Not ten. They were unconcerned. They just cared about their own self. I'm going to make a statement now that some of you might question as soon as I make it, but hear me, hear me through, please. God cannot forgive unconcern. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. He cannot forgive. Unconcern. And the reason he can't forgive it is unconcern will not seek after forgiveness from him. If you're unconcerned about whether you're saved or lost, don't worry about it. You're going to be lost. If you're unconcerned about your neighbor, about your brother or your sister, you're not going to be any good to them. You're just not. I have, you know, I'll soon, Brother Hal, I will soon have 60 years of ministry. Who would have ever thought it? Soon have 60 years of ministry. You're bound to learn something in that amount of time. Because you have dealt with all kinds of people, all kinds of situations, all kinds of circumstances, all kinds of problems, all kinds of characters. All kinds. You've got to learn something from that thing. But you know, one of the things I learned from experience, I have learned that it's easier to get a rank sinner out there to an altar of repentance than it is to get an unconcerned child of God out here. How many hours, how many days, weeks, months, and even years as a pastor have I been concerned about some people that are not concerned about their own self. You may not want to hear it, but you must hear it this morning. Your pastor is more concerned about some of you than you're concerned about yourself. Your pastor prays more prayers for you than you pray for yourself. He prays more for your family than some of you pray for your family. What's it going to take? That day is going to come, and it's going to come upon some folks unawares. At ease, carefree, people won't f ever fast won't pray. How long, how long since it's been since you fasted? Just one day. How long has it been since you've actually had a burden and took it on yourself to fast for three days? 
How long has it been since you fasted a week? Or two weeks? Or longer? How long has it been since you prayed an hour without stopping? How long has it been since you prayed an hour and a half or two hours? How long has it been since you had an all-night prayer meeting and you didn't even go to bed? How long has it been? Unconcerned. Unconcerned. Buying, selling, building, planning, eating, sleeping, just going about doing regular things of life. That's what brought about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't win souls. They didn't have converts. That's not what they did. I'm talking to some of the best people in the world this morning. And I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying that because I know it's true. I would testify for you of that fact. Most of you that are here today would never steal anything. You would not take one thing from anybody that didn't belong to you. You sure wouldn't kill nobody. You wouldn't commit adultery. You, you wouldn't rob a bank. You wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't do a lot of things that our world is doing today. But, but you'll go for a long time without a burden, without a real prayer life, without really seeking God. Oh, you might pray in passing, and that's good. But there's a better way of praying than just spare time praying. Because why? The cares of life. And we all get caught up in them. Don't tell me you don't, because you do. It's just life. You come to church, and you go through the motions, some of you, some of you, 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 you've learned how. You learn what's expected of you. And you go through those motions, but your heart and your spirit is not really into it. I've seen people, when I've asked folks to raise your hands and worship God, that they raise their hand and they're over here talking to their neighbor at the same time. That's not worship. May be obedience, but it's not worship. That's not really, really what God wants out of you. Just out of habit, just out of habit, we clap our hands. <laughs> the Bible tells us to clap our hands, and we're in the habit of clapping our hands. We have our little children clapping their hands. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. But sometimes we do it just because. We don't even realize what we're doing it for. We just do it. Please hear me this morning. I'm so concerned today that the thing that brought the final destruction upon Sodom and Gomorrah could also hinder us and bring destruction upon our own self. I repeat what I said before because I want it to sink in. Building is not a sin. Planning is not a sin. Eating is not a sin. Marrying is not a sin. But when those things get to robbing us of doing the things that God wants us to do, then they can become a sin to us. I'm going to make a statement that I, uh, I hope I'm not misunderstood. If I am, I, I just ask you to forgive me and pray for me. I've seen good men lose out with God because of working. Well, that sounds strange. 
I've heard you preach, Pastor, that a man ought to work. He should. He should work. You're mighty right. A man should work. He should provide for his family. I, I have a lot to say about that. I have strong convictions over that. But I have seen men so tied up working that they work day and night, day and night. Not only will they work all the overtime they can get, but they'll sometimes even hook up with another job, an extra job, working, working. So what's wrong with that? Well, the thing that's wrong with that, it takes you away from the house of God. And it keeps you from being in the presence of God and, and hearing what you need to hear that God has ordained for you to hear on that particular occasion. And it will send leanness to your soul. And when your soul gets lean, you're subject to a lot of things that you wouldn't be subject to if you were full of the Spirit. I never will forget when I was uh, sitting on the district board of Texas a number of years ago. And, uh, man come in and uh, was being interviewed. And uh, in, the, in interviewing that particular individual, uh, he was being asked certain questions and and uh, he said, well, he said, uh, the reason for that is uh, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got a car note and I've got a truck note and i got a note on my motor home and i got a note on my bass boat and i got a note on my deer lease and equipment that I got kindly put together and, and besides all the other notes that come just normal that everybody has and, and he said um, he said I, I've, got, I've got to do all this in order to maintain that the brother sat beside me and said sir said uh, perhaps you, uh, you've got too much to maintain you're trying to maintain more than you can afford. And so many people that I know have got themselves in such a mess that, that those things rob them of actually being what God wants them to be. Somebody just said, Pastor, you're, you're minding my business now. You mind it right, I am. That's what a pastor is for. That's what a true pastor is for. Is to help point out things to you that you may be overlooking in your life that's causing you problems with God that you really don't want to have with God. I believe every one of you want to live for God or you wouldn't keep coming back around this place. But let me tell you something. We need to do something different. Some of us do than what we've been doing. Oh, you're good. You're wonderful. You're excellent in a lot of ways. But one thing thou lackest. What are you looking for, Pastor, this morning? I'm looking for soul winners out of this church. I'm looking for soul winners out of this church. A lot of folks want to preach. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of folks want to sing. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of folks want to play the instruments. Nothing wrong with that. But how many people want to win souls? Boys, it's hot and heavy up here this morning. I didn't want to talk to you like this today because it's been so good. So good. So, so precious. And yet, I'm compelled to. Brother McCall will be back in a minute. 
be a whole lot better. Just put some, have something to look forward to. I'm going to the book of 1 Kings, please, chapter 20, verse 39 and 40. Did you put that? And as the king passed by, this man, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside, and he brought a man to me. And he said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself has declared it. Why? Why? Why did this man fail in his duty that cost him his life? Why? Was he surprised and caught off guard? No. He was just busy here and there. Did a group of other men overpower him and take his prisoner away? Just busy here and there. Was he ignorant of his responsibility? No. He knew very well what was expected of him, but he just got busy here and there. Did he understand what he was supposed to do? Yeah, but he got busy here and there. Did he know that this was a life and death matter? He knew it but he was busy here and there. Did he fail because he was lazy? No. Busy here and there. Simply, simply, simply saying this morning that you and I today are in so much danger of just getting caught up in the cares of life that we're busy here and there. And we're just not as concerned as we should be about doing the will of God. Oh, bless God. Praise God. Can we love the Lord just a moment, please? Jesus, I want you to know that we love you here. God, we want to do your will. It's our heart's desire, Lord, to be everything you want us to be. God, you're so good. You're so wonderful to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In going back to the book of Genesis and uh, finding out the very first question that's recorded that God ever asked man, The question that God asked Adam was, Adam, where are you? Where art thou, Adam? Where art thou? So I'm here to declare this morning that your first responsibility, my first responsibility, is to myself. The Bible says when Acts Chapter 2, verse 40, after Peter got through preaching that wonderful message that we all shout about, thank God about, repent, be baptized, every one of you, the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it, Amen. And for the promises unto you and your children, all the, and it goes on, but it goes on and says further, and save yourself from this untoward generation. If I'm going to be saved, I've got to do something about it. 
If you're going to be saved, you're going to have to do something about it. I can't blame you if I'm not saved, and you can't blame me if you're not saved. Either You can't blame your brother or your sister or anybody else. It'll be my fault, and it'll be your fault if we're lost. The second recorded question, God is speaking to Cain, and he says, where is your brother? Where is your brother? So what the Bible is saying is that our first responsibility is to ourselves to make our calling and election sure. Seek out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That's our first responsibility. But it don't stop there. We still have other responsibilities. We've got brothers and sisters that need salvation as well as we do. And we need to be concerned enough about it. You know what? How many times I have come to the house of God and you have too. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We sing about that. We testify about that. We talk about that. We instruct others about that because we're so glad we get here. But what about those others out there? I believe that this area is plumb ripe for the picking for this church in the kingdom of God to be a soul winning church. It's ripe. The territory is right. New people are moving in here every day. People that don't know anybody around. This place is going to be mushroom around here. We have a responsibility to our brother. Somebody said that. You mean that drunkard out there, my brother, he can be. He can be. I, I, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to send shock waves through somebody right now. So get ready. But homosexuality is not too difficult for God to deal with and take care of. God can deliver the homosexual just like He can deliver the drunkard, the, the thief everybody else my God is able and some of you have got kin folks that are there don't give up on them I said don't give up on them I don't like that either I don't feel real comfortable sometimes around some of these people that I don't know what they are I don't want to embarrass Anybody, but so help me, I was at a place this past week that this per- person waited on me and I didn't know if say, yes ma'am or no ma'am, or no sir. I couldn't tell whether it was a he or she. And, and, and that puts me on a spot that I don't like to, I'm not comfortable in. I like to be able to tell a man, he's a man and a woman from a I think a man ought to look like a man and a woman ought to look like a woman. A man ought to cut his hair and a woman ought to leave hers uncut. Hallelujah. And I think the man of the house ought to be the only one wearing the pants. That's right. And I don't think a man ought to wear a dress or a skirt either. I, boy, I hate to see a man carrying a purse. I hate to carry one myself for my wife every once in a while. I look around. And she said, would you bring me my purse? And I look around and see who might see me. You know? 
You know, nowadays, somebody will take your picture quick. Well, I'm going to close. But I'm not going to close until I get through. Jesus has gone to the extreme to teach us this particular lesson. I want you to know he went overboard to teach this particular lesson. I asked you a question. What was wrong with the fig tree that Jesus despised it so much that he cursed that tree and that it never bear fruit? What was wrong with it? it had no fruit. It wasn't poisonous. It had leaves. It looked the part. Hold on now. We can look the part, and we should look the part. But that's not all that it takes to please the Lord. It's just looking the part. Thank God for the looks. As long as I'm this pastor, you'll always be look like you're looking out there now. You will always be like this. And if I have anything to do with it and say anything about it, the next pastor will feel the same way I feel. And if you don't, I want you voting him in. Amen. That tree wasn't sick. It didn't have poison on it. But it just had leaves, no fruit. What charge was brought about against the man that only had one talent and it was taken away from him? He didn't waste it. He just hid it, buried it, didn't use it, didn't do what he was supposed to do with what he had to do with. Folks, we've got the precious truth of God that our world is dying for every day. People dying around us. We need to get it to them. We need to get it to them. If we can win them through a drama, through a friendship, a fellowship, that's winning. What about the five foolish virgins? They didn't leave the others. They were still there. They didn't even fall in sin. They just let the oil go out of their lamp. They neglected their salvation. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of a salvation? So the final final sin that brought destruction upon Sodom and Gomorrah was a spirit of unconcern. If there had been a soul winner in Sodom. Oh, I've done a lot of soul searching this morning from one till nine. A lot of soul searching. I can't stand here and brag about winning everybody I could have won because I happen to remember a situation that I'm not proud of. And I had quit my job, wonderful job, great opportunity in this world, general superintendent as a of a big plant. Walked off of that job with my wife and four children to go to a state we'd never been before, a city we didn't know nothing of, and start a church. Amen. I remember being there for several months and not being able to find a job out there and I remember things getting tough in my house. I remember, you've heard it before, 
but I'll put him through a winter, almost a whole winter without any heat in the house. Nothing on the table but bread, toasted, cut in slices, pretending pieces of it was steak and pieces of it was peas and pieces of it was potatoes. Eat it, son. Isn't it good? Oh, things are going to get better. Sure they are. I remember getting a job, finally. And I went to work for Sears, a neighboring town about 20 miles away. And they put me in what they call the big ticket department. And I was there working, selling washing machines, dryers, and refrigerators, and different things of the big t- ticket line. And I remember a man coming in one morning, and he kind of kind of stood over here, and I saw him, and I tried to make conversation with him, and if he wanted to sell him something, he said, no, he, was, he wasn't there to buy nothing. Oh, you're not there to buy anything. No, I'm not there to buy anything. Okay. Okay. One more go. And then, then I'd try to sell an item over here, item over there, and that guy kept, kept just standing around, standing around, kept standing around. I'd go over here, and he'd be over here where I'd want to go, and just standing around, just standing around. Just doing nothing, just standing around. Just standing around. And the man actually got on my nerves. He actually got on my nerves. I thought, man, if you're not going to buy anything, why don't you go somewhere else? Why don't you do something else? You, you know, you, I'm afraid you might be causing me to lose customers. And I, I got a wife and I got children. Feed, and I kept getting disgusted and disgusted, and more disgusted, and and uh, I basically forgot what I went out there for. I went out there to win souls to God, but now I'm busy here and there. I'm concerned about this, and I'm concerned about that, and. Uh, Something about this. And, and I, while I'm while I'm while I'm trying to sell, I I'm trying to talk to the Lord. God, move him out of here. He's he's hindering things around here. You get him out of here. I found out something about him the next day. I didn't know. The man dropped dead of a heart attack when he left that place where he did. And I didn't say one thing to him about the Lord. I don't know who he was. I didn't know anything about him. Didn't know where he come from. Didn't know where he was going what he was doing, but I do know he was a soul. And he was within my reach that I could have at least testified. May not have done any good. I'm not saying it would, but it may. It may have. I don't know. I just know I didn't do it. I just know I didn't do it. I'm not looking forward. I'm not looking forward. I am not looking forward to ever meeting that man in judgment. And yet we meet them every day. All day long. We rub shoulders with them on the job. We see them in the drugstore, in the grocery store, in the restaurants. And we're not concerned enough about their soul. They even hand them a track. Hard. I give an invitation. Oh God. 
Oh, it's getting heavier and heavier. Brother Philip Allen, would you come up to the music, please? I told you about pulling three men out of the river whose boat capsized one time when there was over a dozen other boats sitting out there and fishing with an easy reach of getting those men. And I had just arrived. The boat was still on the trailer in the back of my car. <clears throat> I had to back it down into the river, get in it and crank up and go out there and save those three men. Other people were just letting them holler and fight the water for safety, crying out for help. Nobody wouldn't help. Unconcerned. Unconcerned. Oh, God. That horrifies us. I read in the paper one time about a little eight-year-old girl <clears throat> running down beside the highway with no clothes on. Somebody chasing her. Cars galore passing her left and right, left and right, left and right. Nobody stopped to offer help. They found her brutal, brutally murdered body side of the road in the weeds where she had been raped and her throat had been cut out. People passing them by, just unconcerned, unconcerned. I hope somebody this morning gets a hold of this. It's time for somebody to make a move to action. Would you stand this morning? I'm going to help you to stand, to stand. It's prayer time. I'm looking for soul winners today. I'm looking for somebody this morning to, to look. I need the work, but I, I don't need it to miss church, to make me miss church. I need the extra money, but I, 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 I need to be in the prayer room. I need to get there so I can be a part and I can do my share. He told him, "Asataka yo siri yo kaha." He told him, "Asiki yo shatara." It's prayer time. All over the church, it's prayer time. You don't have to be a member of our church to pray. We invite everybody. We invite everybody. We invite everybody to find you a place to pray. It's time to seek the Lord, folks. It's time to seek the Lord. It's time to call upon Him while He can be found. It's time for us to examine ourselves like the Bible says, to, to look to our own self. It's time, it's time. It's prayer time, it's prayer time, it's prayer time. It's prayer time. We can get so unconcerned that the songs won't bother us. It won't. It's been so long. Won't incite us. The message won't move us. Even the conviction of God tugging at our heart and our spirit. It won't bother us enough to do anything about it. And one more Folks, you got an opportunity this morning to take advantage of the situation that you find yourself in. Move he wants us all. With your message he wants us all. He wants us all. Again. To consider ourselves. It's been consider so our, long. 
Our duties, Since our responsibilities to be concerned about somebody thee. else. Oh God, 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 God. Oh God. Son, one more time, let your message move. Oh God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, dear God, this morning. It's been so long. God, we're we're but flesh. We're so weak, Lord. We're so frail. Take me back once more. We gotta have help. God, we want to do what you want us to do. And one more time, let your message But we love ease. Me. We love comfort. Move me with your message. We love everyday life. Once again. Oh, God. We love to eat. It's been we love so to drink. We love to sleep. We love to relax. We love vacation. We love to hunt. We love to fish. Oh God, we love to shop. We love. And one more time, let your just everyday life, just the cares of life, cares of life. Cares of life keep us from being what we really again. ought to be. And people dying all around us lost. It's been so long since I oh, God. oh, I really want help, Lord. I really do want help. Take me back once more to Calvary. Oh God. Move me with your message once again. I wonder how many folks this morning will sincerely ask God for a burden for the lost. I wonder. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that would sincerely pray and ask God to help make you a soul winner is there one there's one is there another would you raise your hand nobody looking but myself God one there's another one thank you there's another one still another one others 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 Ask the Lord in sincerity. God, help me. Help me to overcome the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, and put my priorities where your priorities are and be what you want to be instead of what I want to be. It would be good if you'd reach over and pray for your neighbor, if you don't mind, if it's appropriate. Men with men, women with women. Thank you, brother. Yes, 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 yes. It's been so long since I had broke within. Yes, yes, yes. Do it, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Help me, Lord. God, I need help. I need help. One more time, let your message move.
It's been so long since I have broke with Yes, 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 yes. Take me back Praise once God. more to Calvary. And one more time at your message move me. Sing it, brother. Sing it, folks. Move me with oh, yes. your message. Once again, will you let God make it's a difference been in your so life? Long since I broke will you allow God to actually change you? Take me back once more. Let God put the right priorities. And one more time, God. let your message move me. Thank you, Lord. Move Thank you, Jesus. Me with your message Thank you, Lord Jesus. Once again. It's been so long since I have broke with him. Let the Lord do it. Take me back once more. If I don't get but one or two this morning out of this whole crowd, and one there'll be a spark. There'll be a beginning. Just one or two that will say, I am going to do my very best. I'm going to do it. God's going to help me do it. I'm going to seek the Lord until it does. I know I sought the Lord till the Holy Ghost came. I sought the Lord till other things have come as well throughout the years. I believe we can seek the Lord until we get to the place that God wants us to get. And we can be exactly what God wants us to be. Time is quickly passing us by. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're doing it right now, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing right now. Mm. Don't rush off. Just stay where you are for a moment. Oh God, 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 God. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Bless your name, dear God. I bless your name, dear God. I bless your name, Lord. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. The Lord is doing something right now. Yes, he is. The Lord is doing something right now. Let him do it, church. Just a few more moments. Be in prayer with us. Will of God be done. 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 Will of God Praise God. God bless you. You may stand this morning if you like. Oh, God. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of our guests again for coming.
We hope you can come back again. God's got great things in store for this place. Let's be here early tonight. Let's make it to the prayer room. Let's talk to the Lord about the service. Father, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, today for helping us. Thank you, Lord, for what we felt today, for your nearness, for your concern, Lord. We want your concern to become our concern as well. Help us to be everything, dear God, that you know that we can be. Give us the desire in our heart, Lord, to fulfill the purpose for which you have brought us here for the first place. Go with us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. And keep us in the love of God always. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Shake hands. Hug next if it's appropriate. Until we see you again, go with God. <laughs>